Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the I, Maximilian, will be taking over for that dreadful Mitch today. To all my adoring fans out there, I do apologize for not being around for so long. You see, I was far too busy doing rich people's stuff. Like paying Banksy an absurd amount of money for this new logo. So welcome to the new and improved Commander's Quarter Millions. On today's episode, I'll be talking about the most exquisite new cards to add to your collection. A card connoisseur as I has the most exquisite taste and deserves the best cards. Peasants out there like Mitch would not understand such class. But to add a little fun to this and to appease my many fans, I'll add a little countdown for you. So we'll be going through the 10th most exquisite new card all the way up to number one. I, of course, do not have to pick and choose which of these cards to add into my collection because I already have them all. Nonetheless, let's start things off at number 10 with the borderless Croxa Titan of Death's Hunger. I like Croxa to hunger for the best things in life. The current price of this beauty is $32.47, or in other words, chump change for me. But a peasant such as Mitch could never afford such a thing. Mitch probably couldn't even afford the regular Croxa at $19.31. I mean, how is he supposed to afford such things with such small budget decks? The best things in life are truly lost upon him. Though I do prefer the Borderless, I of course have both of these cards. And if you are a fancy gentleman such as I, you will have the same. Anyways, moving on to number 9 is the exquisite Mothra Supersonic Queen. The peasants might play with Luminous Broodmoth, but only people with real class will play with this Godzilla alternative art card. At $36.93, that is far too expensive for the peasantry. So enjoy your classless Broodmoth while I play with the finest delicacies in magic. Alternative art cards are some of my favorites because they're always more expensive. So wizards darling, more alternative arts in the future please. Although I'm sure you don't need encouragement from me because you know they make you more money. And as everyone knows, you love money almost as much as I do. But anyways, moving on to number 8 comes Fierce Guardianship at $37.99. This card doesn't even need an alternative art to be expensive, though I wish they had made one so it would be more expensive. It's quite ironic that a card that is free to cast is not free to buy. In fact, that seems to be quite the dichotomy of these types of cards. When you make a card that costs no mana, the price goes up. So wizards in the future make a fierce guardianship that even gives mana. That way it is guaranteed to be even more expensive than this one. And of course, with that new Fierce Guardianship, we will also need an alternative art version as well. Perhaps an image of me on my throne drinking tea. Royalty fees will of course be required, so have your people call mine. But now it's time for us to move on to number 7 with the borderless extension of Holebreacher. Holebreacher is currently $38.25. And this merfolk pirate is an individual that seems to love treasure and money nearly as much as I. Making a card that turns your opponent's extra draws into your treasures, how devious are you wizards? Now again, if you are a peasant, you can save some money by buying the lesser version. 
This hull breacher does not have the borderless extension, but it will save you some money. It is only $26.01. Though again at this price, I doubt the peasantry could afford it. And that of course is a good thing because the peasantry does not even deserve to look at treasure. Moving on to number 6, that we've got another Godzilla alternative art with Jadora, King of the Cosmos. From one king to another, Jadora, you are a thing of beauty. You're an absolute steal though at $41.09. Again, if you are some sort of peasant, you can buy Iluna Apex of Wishes. But what's the point of buying that when you can have the king? You might as well just buy a pile of garbage and play with that instead. So enjoy your garbage, peasantry. I, on the other hand, will be enjoying playing with Jadora. And now it's time for us to move on to number five with the delectable Sakashima of a Thousand Faces etched foil. The foil etches such as this one are truly a thing of beauty. And Sakashima is of course the most beautiful of all of them, coming in at $44.23. Now if you cannot afford the etched foil, I am sorry that your life is so terrible. You're just going to have to settle for the regular version at $21.60. I of course have never settled, not once in my life, so I have both. But now let us move on to number 4 with Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. Oh I'm sorry, could you not read that? Do you not speak Phyrexian? Fun fact, my father actually invented the Phyrexian language. I speak many languages, including Phyrexian, which of course makes me a better person than you. Regardless, this version of Vorinclex is going to cost you $51.77. If you can't afford that, perhaps you can afford the Kaldheim Showcase Border at $42.59. And if that is still too pricey for you, let's drop down to $30.70 for the regular version. But remember that if you play a card that has two greater versions, you are truly the lowest of peasants. Now though, let us move on to number 3 with my old pal Uro. Uro's current price for the borderless version is $62.52. Unfortunately though, this price is bound to drop soon. That peasant Mitch came out the other day with a news announcement. Apparently Uro has been causing problems essentially everywhere and has been banned. So the price of this borderless version is bound to drop. And actually, the price of the regular version is already down to a mere $18.23. It once stood tall over $40, so it's lost already half its value. So I'm sure there are many peasants that have lost a lot of money on this and are quite upset. And now it's time for us to move on to number 2 with Allosaurus Shepherd. Now, Allosaurus Shepherd doesn't have a borderless version or alternative art version. It simply is what it is. Its price tag, though, is $89.73. It's at this exquisite price, though, because of a lack of supply. Isn't that wonderful? A fantastic card with a lack of supply, its price just skyrockets. It reminds me of the wonderful reserve list that I love so much. Exclusive cards only for the wealthiest of card connoisseurs. But now of course, let's move on to the crown jewel of the most exquisite new cards with Jeweled Lotus. Wizards, you absolute dog you. You know the reserve list is not to be touched, but you're working to find ways around that, aren't you? I cannot fault you for that though, it is all in the pursuit of money. And I know that this beautiful creation of yours brought in piles of money for you. The Borderless Jeweled Lotus is of course the best version at $173.17. That peasant Mitch would have to sell multiple decks just to even glimpse at this. And of course he couldn't even come close to affording the regular version at a mere $78.33. Wizards, I applaud you for this ingenious idea and this beautiful card. 
But now, my adoring fans, I must leave you as I have no more time for you at this point. But I will allow you to once again gaze upon the glory of my logo, which of course was made with pure gold. Isn't that the only way to make a logo these days?